Now, today my focus will be on orthopedics, which is an important subspecialty, a minor subject, but each question counts, and that's what you have to remember that each and every subject is important. You cannot effort to just lose marks in any of the subjects because of the lot of competition which exists nowadays. So going to the orthopedics without wasting further time, we will just go um, and revise how to prepare for the examinations, what is asked, what you should prepare and how to prepare and what uh, is in the examiner's mind as far as your NEET, PG and FMG questions are concerned. So that's very important. Now, most of the questions, uh, there's a trend, yes, there are clinical questions asked but sometimes the clinical questions are given in a manner that uh, you just is one cash point among the questions and you have to remember these questions and the high yield points about these questions. So I will be going rapidly through uh, uh, different things. So this uh, video or this class will just uh, be very important because there is a lot of uh, things which can be expected in the questions and there will be a roundup of the types of questions which are asked which you will come to know. So as far as the first thing is concerned, what is on the examiner's mind sometimes? Uh, the examiners are in the manner and in the habit of asking these things, typical, atypical appearances, eponyms and all those things. So appearance of bony tumors, as far as orthopedics is concerned, a lot many questions are bony tumors. So we have got the bony tumors in the form of metastasis to the bone, we have got the chondroblastomas, the chondrosarcomas, the osteoblastomas, osteosarcomas, evinks, all those things over here the focus the focus is that many a times i have seen that this simple question the so bubble characteristic appearance of so bubble appearance is seen which uh, tumor of the bone so you, these things you have to remember so you have a multilocated uh, 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 appearance of a you are given a radiograph of a bone and in which there is a multilocated and a bubble uh, bubbly appearance at the distal end of the bones and the tumor you are given a question in the form of different clinical scenarios so typically you have to remember that the so bubble appearance of the bone is seen in osteoclastoma so osteoclastoma also gives the name a GCT, giant cell tumor of the bone. That's very important. You have to remember the classic association of the osteoclastoma with the sole bubble appearance. So you will be having those bubble like uh, things, multilocular things at the terminal ends of the bones, especially in the long bones, especially. So that will be typical of a sole bubble appearance. And this is osteoclastoma or giant cell tumor. Cordyman's triangle. Cordyman's triangle. Uh, Periosteal reaction, uh, hyperproliferation in which the bone growth is more as a result of a tumor's condition, especially osteosarcoma, and typically a triangular appearance at the terminal ends of the long bones. So, the periosteal reaction in which the uh, terminal ends are grow that is a typical Cordman's triangle and it is seen in not in osteoclastoma but in osteosarcoma so you have to remember what clastoma and sarcoma that's important now associated with the peri uh, with the cordman's triangle sometimes you have spicules of the bones which give a radiative appearance like the rays of the sun and that's also important this classic appearance of a combination of cordman's triangle and sun ray appearance is given the name as osteosarcoma so that is very important so these three Two typical things are classic of a well-defined osteosarcoma. Now, what is also asked sometimes is the chicken wire pattern. What is chicken wire pattern? Sometimes the bones have got this lacy network, a reticular network sort of a thing, and with some calcifications in between, which we classically give the a name a chicken wire appearance so something wiring sort of a thing you can remember in simple terms something in a, a wire in a beaded or something in the form of a reticulum or something in the form of a network with calcifications which also are given the name as chicken wire calcifications so two things but a classic chicken wire cal uh, appearance is pattern is seen in chondroblastoma so that is very important and what another thing is frequently asked a question which has been so many times asked Linear stations are seen in which bone tumor and you have to remember hemangiomas. What is hemangiomas? What, this, what is this linear uh, stations? You have seen a person who is inside the old classic prisons and there are those linear bars. 
iron bars and you can well prominently see the linear bars in case of vertebral hemangioma because of the distribution of the growth there is an alteration of the growth of the bone and what it gives there is a pattern a linear pattern that means there will be bar like uh, appearance on the radiographs that is given the name as linear striations and they are very characteristic of vertebral hemangiomas so these appearances are important you have to remember these things for your examination points whether the clinical questions are asked your memory based questions are you will always find in a clinical scenario these typical or atypical characteristics associated and that's what an examiner wants to test you whether you know and sometimes you can be in a radiograph and you will have to interpret because of such appearances so that's important now also some other examiners are very frequently in the habit of asking you certain eponyms so we have so many so many eponyms in in, in uh, orthopedics in other different medical specialties but in, or surgical specialties but here you have to remember that classically classically this is an example there's a huge list this is just to give you an idea what is asked what is in the examiner's mind and how you have to prepare your studies so as far as this is concerned you know that there is this the, uh, important thing the show force fracture you know there is this upper limb and upper limb there's the radius so in case there's a fracture of the radius above the stellar process so they, you have to remember that that is given the classic name of show force fracture these are the terms which will be asked one to two questions you expect from orthopedics in this form so show force fracture you have the cottons you know the uh, and malleola in the lower limb so you have got the tibia and the fibula and the malleola sometimes we have got what we call the classic name is trimalleolar fracture which is given the name as cottons fracture so you have to remember that cottons fracture is the trimalleolar fracture okay and we have got the malleolar of the two bones must it is only bimalleolar that is given the name as pots fracture so this is the difference trimalleolar bimalleolar what is pots what is cottons so that is important jefferson's there's this vertebra the cervical vertebra the atlas c1 and once there's the burst fracture of atlas it is given the name as jefferson so you have to remember uh, Jones fracture, fifth metatarsal. The metatarsals are important ones. The fracture of the fifth metatarsal, we give it the name of uh, Jones fracture. Axis, hangman fracture. Montages, proximal alumni dislocation of the radius. So, uh, uh, so, dislocation of one bone and fracture of the other bone. So, that's how we remember. March, very important, very frequently asked, stress fracture of the second or the third metatarsal. So, that's important. So, my point is that uh, you might be given. A radiograph and in the radiograph you'll be asked to identify the fracture the name uh, it, will, it will not be directly given as a question that the second metatarsal is fractured the third metatarsal is fractured the two manual are fractured no it might be given in the name in the form of these names so for you it is very important to remember not only the clinical aspect the you have to memorize these things to know exactly what we mean by this fracture what is Jefferson what is Hangman's what is Cotton's what is uh, uh, say March so these are very important things these you have to remember and it will require you a huge there's a huge list which I'll be coming up again in some other class but here you have to remember to get an idea what are the types of questions which are on the examiner's mind I'm talking about orthopedics so you saw one thing is asked about the bony appearance of the tumors the second thing is asked about the eponymous associated with the practice practice are very important as far as orthopedics is concerned now many a times there are these clinical scenarios that you are asked to identify which syndrome is this out of a clinical entity at the clinical spectrum of the things which are given so clinical spectrum of the things so you will be given uh, say for example a question this is i think downs the first thing is downs so in the down syndrome you will be having a classical combination of say something like hypotonia as i mentioned earlier uh, the, uh, 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 enlarged tongue which is there clinodactyly of the fifth fingers and single transverse palmar crease epicanthal folds excess nuchal, sk uh, uh, nuchal skin so down syndrome can present in a different manner with a pleiotrophy of symptoms there can be hundreds and hundreds of uh, manifestations by which you can recognize uh, a child with down syndrome but 
some of the most important things you have to remember so you can be given a clinical question in the form of a clinical spectrum which can vary and still the clinical condition will be the same so down syndrome can present itself in the form of multiple things but main important from an orthopedic point or from a dermatological or other things which are given here i have just focused more on an orthopedic point so you can be having up slanting palpebral fissures epicathal folds clinical decree of the fingers and other things like enlarged tongue you can uh, that is that also you can just observe with, if you're a keen observer but this means that you have to have this question can be asked in pediatrics this question can be asked in uh, orthopedics this question can be asked in any uh, branch of general medicine so this is important so the question is overlap that's important so down syndrome what are the important features of down syndrome you have to remember this thing it's not only down syndrome so we can be having different uh, clinical entities we have edwards we have pato syndrome so say for example taking an example of edwards syndrome in the exa uh, edwards syndrome you will be having microcephaly important a microcephaly a small head is a very important and small palpebral fissures they are yeah small palpebral fissures microcephaly and classic rocker bottom feet so hypotonia and cleft lip so these are the orthopedic manifestations of syndromic entities and you have to identify from the clinical spectrum of what so these are very important points advanced syndrome for example small palpebral fissures low set ears low birth weight is common microcephaly rocker bottom feet is the cashy the cleft lip hypotonia and clenched hands so that classical appears would be typical of a patient of advanced syndrome in contrast to down syndrome so you can make a difference between downs you can make a difference between downs and advanced so that's the point of my taking now say another question uh, fetal alcohol syndrome we have got many teratogens uh, which we will be discussing ahead and out of them smoking alcohol is important and females who take alcohol they can just uh, chronic uh, chronic al alcoholics who females who remain pregnant and they can be having fetal alcohol syndrome and a very important microcephaly is a very important component of uh, those females who just take alcohol and remain pregnant also fetal alcohol syndrome growth retardation small palpable smooth smooth filter a thin upper the microcephaly which i mentioned short nose and this is very important you have to recognize these features so you can be given a clinical scenario in which you will be given a case uh, a female who was a smoker who used to take alcohol and this is the presentation the uh, present this point and what the child is presenting with so fetal alcohol syndrome and you have to know the components of the fetal alcohol syndrome small palpebral fissure very important we cannot miss these things uh, short nose microcephaly classic of fetal alcohol syndrome so in a similar manner we have those connective tissue disorders and one of the classic class, uh, connective tissue disorders which is frequently asked is the marfan syndrome which is given it over here and marfan syndrome you remember that it is associated with fibrillin defect and what is important that patients can be having many features high arched palate scoliosis joint hypermobility and ocular manifestations in the form of dislocation of lens so scoliosis say for an example high arched palate uh, a long arm span tall individuals uh, then cardiology uh, mitral valve prolapse uh, you can have a click on auscultation so i'm not going into the all the details of the marfan syndrome but here orthopedically you have to remember that scoliosis uh, thin limbs uh, increased stature tall individuals so this is how you have to arrive at a diagnosis you have to remember the clinical spectrum and then you can answer these clinical questions but here downs adverse tattoos fetal alcohol syndrome marfan they are important clinical entities then coming to what you are much fascinated about is the clinical scenarios so over here we have got three clinical scenarios and this is the, uh, the this is the first clinical scenario a two year old presents with multiple fractures in different stages of healing bought by our concerned parents now i have not given options here so this you have to read the question lines carefully what it means two year old it's a child two years old multiple fractures in different stages of healing that's important bought by our concerned parents so what comes to your mind we can be having a patient child who has had a trauma we can be having a child who has some defect say osteogenesis imperfecta uh, along with osteogenesis uh, say dentogenesis imperfecta so that's important now import our concerned parents this is this clinical entity that parents beat 
their children out of some psychological problem. Uh, so many things and they come to you and they have repeatedly beaten the child at different points. So this is why multiple fractures and they have beaten the child to an extent that he has developed fractures and then different stages of healing. It is not that they have beaten months only. So repeatedly a child has been beaten and our concern, they are just coming to you because they are having a drama. They are just doing this drama as if they are concerned. They are not basically all concerned about the child, but they have brought him over there, or the police has brought the child, or the neighbors have brought the child. By our concern, we just, so you can see that they seem as if they have not come. They are our concern. That is the cashier. This is simply a question of battered baby syndrome in which parents beat their child and pose as if they are concerned, and the fractures here are in multiple states of healing. It's very important. That's why we have to go through the case scenario. That's one thing. A six-year-old with bilateral symmetrical fractures and blue sclera, bones and osteopenic and brittle. So here, this is something else. This is not the same clinical scenario. Here, a six-year-old with bilaterally symmetrical. There's a fracture on the right side, same on the left side. So symmetric. Symmetry is maintained. And this is a classical of systemic diseases. Blue sclera. You know blue sclera is usually associated with osteogenesis imperfecta. Bones are osteopenic and brittle and classic of osteogen. This is what it differentiates from the above question. That's why I put up this question here. Here, it is not asymmetric. It is not in different states of healing. It is symmetric. The bones are brittle. There is osteopenia and there is, there is no our concern parents. And there's a blue sclera. These all are pointers towards osteogenesis imperfecta, which we will take up separately. But here, but here my point is in just making you notice the history matters, the clinical case scenario matters, the points in the question matter, and your knowledge matters more than that. Now, this other question, a patient with multiple injuries on day two develops, has head trauma, multiple, they have a stachycardia, tachypnea, decreased PO2 and rash. So, once a patient has a trauma, there can be a fracture of the long bone, the fracture of the long bone causes uh, release of the fat from the bone marrow of the long bones and that classically presents a fat embolism and fat embolism presents suddenly acutely and it can the patient can be gasping with breath one moment he's alive the second moment he can die because of collapse because of the fat the rub the fat which comes from the marrow can just go into the circulation and classically you can have PTK and rash on the chest and we have to remember these presentations. So this is this, this is this is something you will expect something else. Tachycardia, something uh, specific to the respiratory in the form of a respiratory disease. No, it's post-traumatic. So multiple injuries and day two sudden. Uh, so there is a sudden tach tach uh, this tachycardia, tachypnea, decreased pu This is a classic science of fat embolism. I'm not talking about air embolism. I'm not talking about pulmonary thromboembolism. I'm talking about fat embolism, which is an entirely different entity. And you have to be very, very careful and monitor patients with a long bone fracture for this clinical entity, fat embolism. And it is a very important question, especially asked in USMLE and MRC. So this is how we reached the conclusion. This is to just give an idea what it asks better students thrive on the better concept, better knowledge and good standard textbooks. So that is what I would just uh, just uh, remind you and just impress upon you to read standard textbooks. Only then you can score well, have a good merit and get a branch of your choice. Thanks a lot.